Let's be real here. I don't need to introduce Taylor Swift. You know who she is and you know about her concert already. It's gonna be called the Eras Tour. See you there. Over the past year, my girlfriend taught me the ways of being a Swifty, which started with me sitting in that damn Ticketmaster line for over four hours to get us seats for a Christmas present. And out of the handful of concerts I've been to, it was probably the best one. Even though I like some of the other artists' music more, this woman knows how to put on a show. And now I expect everybody I pay to see play for at least three and a half hours. And clearly most people feel that way because experts believe that this entire tour is going to end up grossing over two point two billion dollars for context the previous record for the highest grossing tour of all time was the recent farewell tour for elton john which made about 887 million dollars by the end of it so even if you subtract the amount by how much the eras tour has made the number is still higher than the farewell tour which is just absolutely insane over the past year i became a fan of taylor swift the artist my favorite album is folklore and my favorite song is so it goes which i guess nobody else will agree with until Reputation Taylor's version comes out eventually. But with the release of the Eras Tour movie, which is pretty much just the concert experience contained in a packed movie theater, I am no longer a fan of Taylor Swift, the artist, because now I'm a fan of Taylor Swift, the artist, the filmmaker, and the businesswoman. Because a concert movie isn't anything new. There have been plenty of those, and quite a few of them have brought in some serious money. But a lot of websites are claiming that this thing could make up to $145 million this weekend. And if if you aren't processing how big of a number that is, the only two movies this year that have had a bigger opening weekend are Barbie and the Mario movie. Trying to get a ticket for the movie is just like getting a seat for the actual concert at this point. Because at least by me, pretty much every single screening is sold out for almost the entire weekend. This announcement was so big that Beyonce came out of left field and announced that she too was going to release a recorded version of her concert in theaters. Now some film people could come out of their letterbox corner and complain that this isn't cinema. And yeah, it's it's just the concert. It's just recorded in the highest quality possible. Like it's a, it's a cool thing, but it's not a movie. But there is something huge, something monumental even I would say when it comes to the release of the Eras Tour movie, because it's not gonna win the Academy Award for best picture or anything like that, but it does open the door into unknown territory for the future of movies. So let's just dive into it. So there was some speculation for a while that Taylor was working on some sort of concert movie like this because Reputation had its own recorded version, but that was released exclusively on Netflix. This one is going straight to the big screen. And to do that, Taylor Swift and her team pulled off a deal that from what I can tell is the first of its kind. So I'm not gonna act like I'm a scholar when it comes to how studios and theaters negotiate, but to sum it up in the simplest of terms, when a studio decides on a release date for a movie, it's often a couple years in advance for a lot of these big blockbusters like Avatar or any of the Marvel movies. So the studios inform the theaters and then the theaters will be able to inform the other studios like, hey, just to let you know, uh, an Avengers movie's coming out this weekend. That way, years in advance, you can gauge when is the best time to release your movie so it doesn't just get eaten up by the rest of the competition. But since the pandemic, these theater chains have been getting screwed pretty consistently. And I'm not just talking about how literally nobody could actually go to the theater for almost a year. I'm talking about how once these theaters were finally able to open up, it seemed like almost every single studio decided to dump their big movies onto streaming sites without even telling the theaters. Warner Brothers put movies like Dune, Godzilla vs. King Kong, The Suicide Squad, The Matrix 4. God, that movie was bad. Back to The Matrix. Back to The Matrix. Back to The Matrix. All of these huge designed for big screen movies were just dumped on HBO for free the same day they were released theatrically. Disney put the first Marvel Phase 4 movie on Disney Plus the same day it released for a premium rental fee and Universal pulled Trolls World Tour from theaters after only a week or two, which would have been a pretty substantial substantial amount of money for these chains considering the younger families could go to the Trolls movie and then the families with teenagers could go watch Black Widow. AMC, Regal, Cinemark, and every other chain was taking blow after blow. And even though the future of movie theaters still doesn't look the brightest right now, it definitely looked its bleakest around 2021. So then the strikes for both the writers and actors happened. And since nothing was being actively worked on, these studios decided to delay their entire slate of fall 2023 movies into the entirety of 2024. Instead of just paying these people what they deserve. So how does Taylor Swift fit into all of this? Well, obviously she is not a studio and none of these larger companies have the rights to distribute the Eras Tour movie. Instead, she went straight to AMC, cut them a deal to distribute nationwide and pretty much booked out all of October without informing any of these other studios what was going on, which to put it lightly, really pissed 
the studios off. And you know what? Good for AMC and the rest of these theater chains that they can finally stand up for themselves a little bit and work with Taylor to get this thing released. Because this single concert movie really opens up a ton of possibilities for artists of any kind. I'm not talking about just musicians putting their concerts on the big screen, but rather some filmmakers going straight to the theaters and saying, hey, I own my movie. Let's cut a deal. Like if Steven Spielberg had paid for everything when it came to his next movie and went straight to AMC, then both him and the theaters are going to have a great payday. Or if Greta Gerwig wanted to make another smaller film like Lady Bird with her paycheck from Barbie, why couldn't she just fund it herself and go straight to Regal? There are unlimited possibilities here, but Taylor took it even one step further because she didn't spend millions on a marketing campaign. She literally just posted a quick trailer on her Instagram. And yeah, not everybody has about 270 75 million followers, but it still gets the gears turning of what is even possible when it comes to the future of movies. Because Taylor Swift has already made it clear that she wants to start directing soon. Did you always want to direct? No. Uh, I always wanted to tell stories. I have always written stories, poetry. I think this just kind of grew out of a natural extension of that storytelling. And I think I've, I've directed about 10 music videos and now one short. So I'm kind of, I'm just sort of inching my way along towards taking on more responsibility. She already has a deal with Searchlight Pictures for her first feature film, which means it will technically be a Disney movie, believe it or not. But I wonder if this new relationship she has formed with the theater chains will have any impact on that at all. I have no idea what kind of project she wants to make, but if I had to take a guess based off of her previous work, I think she would lean more towards a grounded story, maybe something coming of age, rather than taking on something science fiction or action packed. But this woman changes up her style all the time, so who knows what she's gonna do. My point is is if you are somebody like Taylor Swift that has the money to fully fund your own projects, why not? Sure, there are benefits to working within a studio system, but I think Taylor has proven over and over again that she is somebody that doesn't want to work within a studio system at all. Once I actually realized what a Taylor's version of a Taylor Swift album was, with her finally being able to own the rights to her own music, I thought that was a pretty gangster move. Most filmmakers work with studios for the sole sake of getting distribution, like an A24, for example, who will just come to Sundance and swoop up any of their favorite films from the festival. And if you're going to pick one indie company to work with besides A24, Searchlight Pictures has a pretty great track record, but cinema has gone through so many phases throughout its history, and we are walking into pretty unknown territory for the rest of the decade. Gear is more affordable so that young and hungry filmmakers who are tired of seeing the same recycled CGI trash every single month at the theater finally have the tools at their disposal to make really whatever they want at this point. And although I wasn't really sure who the next leader in low budget indie filmmaking was going to be, I'm starting to think that maybe with just a couple of moves that Miss Swift could actually be the one who changes the entire trajectory of both the theatrical experience and movies in general. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you tuning in. Just to let you know before you subscribe, this is not a Taylor Swift channel. So if you are planning on subscribing for more Taylor Swift stuff, it's probably not gonna be here, but I will definitely talk about her upcoming movie whenever that comes out, because I think she's a very exciting person to look out for when it comes to future filmmakers. But if you're not gonna subscribe, totally okay. Just do me a favor, like the video. If you made it to this point, clearly you liked it enough. And just giving it that like really helps the YouTube algorithm, helps me out a lot. So I'd appreciate it if if you did that comment down below what you think of this entire video this entire situation do you think taylor is making a mistake going with a studio system do you think this is a test for her to do her own thing i don't really know that's the fun of talking about it on youtube what do you think her future movie is actually going to be like i said i think it's gonna be some sort of coming of age thing but i could be completely wrong on that and all my social media is linked right here so follow me on anything that you want and yeah i guess that's it so thank you so much for watching again and i hope you have an awesome day Thanks.